Hello, everyone. Uh, so we will start the talk, so please uh, take a seat. Thank you. So my name is Laura. I'm working as product owner at Odoo. And during this presentation, I will explain you how to use Odoo Studio as a prototyping tool when you are working on custom development for a specific customer. So first, uh, let's have a look at the agenda for this presentation. I will start by explaining you why you should use Odoo Studio for prototyping. Then we will discuss the different features of this app. Uh, and then uh, I will finish with a conclusion with the benefits of Studio and a Q&A session. So first, why should you use Odoo Studio? Before showing you the power of that tool, I will first would like to re-explain what is prototyping and why this is important when you are making custom development for a customer. So prototyping consists in building a, a version of a product uh, that is not the final one and that you will test before building the final version. Uh, prototyping when working on a custom uh, development is uh, useful for a different reason. First, uh, it allows you to offer a better quality in the development that you will provide to your customer. Indeed, you will be able to test different iteration of the product and thanks to that test, you will be, be able to improve the quality of the product. It focuses on the user because you can ask the end user, you can ask your client to test the prototype and to give his feedback. Based on that feedback, you can change the specification. This is something that happens all the time uh, when you really show the work in front of the customer, he can notice that finally he does not need that feature or he needs another one. So it's much, easy, much easier sorry, for a customer uh, to understand uh, uh, and to define the, the specification for you when he has the prototype in front of him. And of course, uh, it improves the stakeholder engagement. Uh, here, the customer is involved during the entire development process. He does not just get the final result at the end of the development, but he can give feedback. And there are, of course, much more uh, advantages of prototyping when working on custom developments. So I hope that now you are convinced uh, that we should use prototyping uh, when working on big customer projects. And now I would like to show you uh, the power of Studio to do that. For that, I will take a very simple example. Uh, let's imagine that I would like to add the expiration date in the list view of my quotation. That's something quite simple, and here is what I had to do before Studio. First, I had to activate the developer mode. I had to create an inherited view to make sure my changes would not be lost at the next update. I had to name that view, choose the right sequence. And only now, things get a bit more complex uh, as I have to define my XPath, and for that, I need to uh, know a bit of code to be able to define the position of the feeds in my view. Then I save, I refresh, and if I've made a mistake, it's only at that point that I will notice it. It was time taking and some code knowledge was needed. That's why most of the time this was not used for prototyping. You were most of the time not doing that with your customer just thanks to you and explaining you the specification. So instead of that, we were using uh, annotated screenshot or some written specification. Here I just have a simple uh, field to add in a view, so that's quite simple. But let's imagine that I have 20 fields uh, to add, to rename, uh, to move in my view. Then it becomes really uh, complex and I cannot get a clear overview of the final result. Now let's see how to do that same example, so at uh, the expiration date in the list view of the quotation, but this time with Odoo Studio. So here I'm in the list view of my quotation, I activate Studio, I search for the expiration date, I drop it, and it's done. So that's much faster than before. Uh, I don't need any code knowledge to do it, I just drag and drop the field I want at the position I want, uh, so it's super intuitive to use, and I directly see the final result. I don't have to wait to see that, so the customer can directly tell you uh, if finally prefer the expiration date on the left or on the right. Uh, it can really decide and change the specifications. That's why you can definitely use Studio for prototyping. Now let's have a look at the features of Odoo Studio. Uh, Studio has many, many, many features, so here I will only concentrate on the ones that are particularly useful uh, to prototype. The first one, of course, is that you can create a complete application from scratch just by using Odoo Studio. 
You can define your views, define your fields, define your models, edit the menus, and so on. Uh, but I think that it will be uh, more speaking if I directly show that uh, in the demo. So I'm going back in my database with Odoo Studio, and I will create a new app. I'm working for a real estate uh, company, so I will create a real estate management app. Here I will choose the logo from my application, stick the house in green. The first object I will be working on are the property, so I will have to define who is the owner of the property, what is its price. I create my application and directly have the form view that I can customize. Uh, what I will need in that form view is uh, the city, the street. Uh, I, of course, need to know who is the owner uh, of my property. So for that, I will use a many-to-one field. And what I can do, and that is super powerful also with Studio, is that I can use things that already exist in Odoo. So here I'm creating a new app, but I can also customize existing one and also reuse models that already exist. In Odoo, I already have a good contact form, so I don't want to create a new one. I would just reuse the one that already exists. So here it was, my city, and here, the street. Uh, I also would like to see directly the phone number uh, of the owner uh, without having to go on the contact form of the owner because I'm all the time using that data. So I'm using a related field. What I'm looking for is the phone number on my contact. So I go here, I search for the phone, it's here, and I confirm. So each time that I will uh, use an owner, uh, define an owner on the property, his phone number will be directly written on the form view here. So here it's my phone number. Uh, what else do I need? Of course, the price. Uh, so the estimated price for the goods. So I'm adding it here, estimated price. Uh, I also would like to see what is the priority, the importance of the goods. So I will create a priority field with low, medium, or high, which is also uh, powerful. So you have many different types of fields that you can drop, but you have also many different widgets that are available. For the priority, what I would like to say is these little stars that you have everywhere in Odoo. So here I just choose the widget priority. Uh, I also uh, would like to be able uh, to define the type of the good. Uh, is it a house or is it an apartment? So I create a selection field, I define the values there, I confirm, and this will be the type of the good. Mm, I think that I have almost everything. No, there is still one thing that I would like to add, is the salesperson of the good. So again, I will use uh, a many-to-one, but this time on the users. Okay, and I think that I have most of the information that I need. I can close that, and in not even five minutes, I already have a form view with most of the information that I need uh, made here uh, without any code, just by drag and dropping some fields. Now we'll just uh, like, uh, I will just create some uh, data so that you get a better idea so I have a villa with a view, it's in San Francisco. I have an estimated price of two millions. Uh, so as I told you here, when I'm choosing uh, the, the, the owner of the good, I directly have the phone number that is written just under it. And the salesperson is uh, John Smith, it's a house. I will create a rooftop uh, again in San Francisco. I enter the estimated price. That's an apartment, and just John Smith is the person who sells it. And the last one, uh, an apartment in city center, but this time it's in Los Angeles. And the uh, salesperson is Peter Parker. So now uh, we have shown how to customize the form view. We, have see, we see that we can enter easily the data, that I can use the priority widget, that I can uh, use the decimal uh, field here. Now I would like to show you uh, how to customize the list view. 
For the list view, I won't uh, create new fields, but I will just uh, reuse the one that I've already uh, put in the form view. So what I would like uh, to know is who is the owner of the goods, and I also would like to see the city. Again, it's super easy. I just select the existing field on the left, I drop it at the place I want to see it in the view, and it's done. So here I have my list view, but I can also customize some more advanced view. In just one click, I create a Kanban view for my model. Here I would like to see the priority uh, of the good, and I would like to add an image with the salesperson. Going here, and in just two clicks, I have my Kanban view for the, form, uh, for the, the properties. But I can go uh, even further, because uh, if I would like to uh, define a Kanban view with columns and define a, uh, some stages to follow for the properties, I can also do it in one click. Here, I click on uh, Enable Stages, I close, and now I have my column for sale, sold. I drop the properties here. And that's it, now I'm able to define if the properties are for sale or sold uh, already. And it took just one click in Studio to activate that stages. So that's nice, I have a good form view, um, list view, uh, Kanban view, but now I would like to get uh, some useful statistics about the properties that I have. I can activate the pivot view. Again, it's just one click in Studio. I go in my pivot view. And now I would like to, say, to see the estimated price of the goods that I have, but grouped by city. So now I see the amount uh, that I have to sell in Los Angeles and the one in San Francisco. But that does not look so nice, so what I would like to do is have a graph view because it's much more visual. One click, I have my graph view here. And this time I will do the same, the estimated price grouped by city, I apply. And now I see the percentage of uh, revenue that I can expect uh, to make in Los Angeles or in San Francisco. Uh, so we have seen uh, a lot about uh, what you can do with the views in Studio, but you can uh, also, of course, edit uh, the menus, and it's also something important uh, in the experience of uh, the end user. So here, what I would like to have is one menu with my owners. So I will create it, reuse my contact. I confirm. And now I have uh, created uh, my menus. So here in, I don't know, five or 10 minutes, I was uh, able uh, to build uh, at least uh, the architecture, the basic architecture of my application. Uh, when you are doing this uh, with your customer just next to you, uh, that's super powerful uh, and it has a great impact on the customer satisfaction. What you can also do, uh, which is very important when prototyping, is exporting and re-importing uh, the custom modules that you are making. Uh, so uh, let's take an example. Uh, you are making a prototype for a customer. You just test it, and everything is perfect. You just have to export the module, re-import it in the uh, production database, and then it's done. And for that, you have, again, just one click. You go in the App Switcher menu. You activate Studio. And here, in Customization, you have Export. That's also super useful if you are working with developers uh, that will make the more complex developments uh, because you can prepare all the work for them, prepare the views, the models, the menus, uh, the different fields that you need, and then you can just export your module, give it to the developer, and he will use that to work on the more complex development. And uh, the last part but it, that is also very important is that even if you are doing that with Studio, you can still access the code. So what Studio is making, in fact, uh, Studio is just writing the code for you. So if you need to go deeper in the code to de do things that are more complex, the developer can still do it. So here, I can activate the developer mode. I will go, for example, in the form view of my properties, I activate Studio. And here in the view, I can directly access the XML of the view so that uh, it's really not locked for non-developers. Developers can go into the code that a studio has made and correct it, improve it, add some changes in that. So these were the uh, different features of uh, Studio that I wanted uh, to uh, show you. Now, uh, I will uh, end up with the conclusion about the different benefits that we noticed uh, for Studio. 
First, you can get a prototype much faster. Uh, you don't need any code knowledge, meaning that the, the functional consist consultant, the business analyst, can definitely work on the prototype by themselves. Uh, you get a direct visual preview of the final result. It's very useful to clarify the specification when, with your customer, and it also helps to prepare for more complex development because you can export what you have done, give it to the developer, and access the, the details of the code. During the presentation, I've mainly explained uh, the advantages of Studio for the project manager working on the custom uh, developments. First, to define the specification, but also to really prepare the project. Uh, but this is also very useful for salespeople uh, because they can show it in demo, uh, show the flexibility of Odoo using Studio. Uh, and finally, Odoo Studio is so easy to use that even the end user can use it to show you what they want or to do some customization by themselves. Uh, there are much more things to say about Studio, so there will be some uh, other talks, but if you have questions, you can also come at the workshop, so there will be uh, one tomorrow between 2 and 6, and another one on Friday between uh, 10 and uh, 2.30. Thank you for your attention.